Hi, thanks for joining me tonight for Wednesday Online Bible Study. I'm glad you're here, and I'm glad you've taken the time to join us tonight. We're going to continue with our commercial jingle devotions, as I call them, as tonight we talk about, are you in good hands? Now, do you recognize that commercial slogan? Now, there is a quote that is said that there are two certain things in life, death and taxes, right? But I also want to add car insurance, because it's against the law to drive without it, right? Now, we understand that insurance is a contract with an insurer who will compensate us in the event of loss or peril, right? Now, as I was checking into insurance the other day, I came across a website of an insurance broker who was a Christian. And his purpose was just to make all the insurance lingo easy to understand so that people could make a better informed decision. And he had all the various types of insurances listed. And one thing that caught my eye is that he had soul insurance. And as I looked at that, I realized what he was doing was a very detailed explanation and he was ministering to people so that they could understand that the most important insurance they could have was soul insurance and their eternity with Christ. Amen. So that brings us to our topic tonight. Is your soul in good hands? In the event that you lost your life today here on earth, would you be compensated with the perfect peace of God for eternity? Or would there be a sense of doubt that it could be without it? And that's what we want to talk about today, our soul insurance. It's time to take a review of our portfolio, amen? So let's look at the highlights. The policy is the written word of God, amen? You'll find all your soul insurance policy written down here, amen? Next is the contract for all believers is referred to as the covenant or sometimes referred to as the promise. And the insurer, the one who will compensate us, is God the Father. The guarantor, the one who guarantees our coverage, is Jesus Christ our Lord. Read with me what Hebrews 9, chapter 9, verse 15 says. For this reason, Christ is the mediator of a new covenant that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance now that he has died as a ransom to set them free. Let's look also what Hebrews chapter 7 verse 22 says. Because of this oath, Jesus has become the guarantor of a better covenant. Amen? Now, the one who testifies and signs off on this coverage is the Holy Spirit. Read with me here in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 15 through 17. It reads, The Holy Spirit also testifies to us about this. First, he says, This is the covenant I will make with them after that time, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts, and I will write them on their minds. Then he adds, Their sins and lawless acts I will remember no more. Amen. Now, let's look a little deeper into the written details of this coverage. We find that God has offered all humanity this coverage. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only Son, that whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but have eternal life. Amen? Amen. Anyone who believes in Jesus Christ is eligible for this soul insurance coverage. Now, what other benefits are available under this promise? Well, let's look. It's guilt-free. Have you ever heard that term, accident forgiveness? Let's look at here what Romans 8 verses 1 and 2 read. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. Amen. The Apostle Paul in the previous chapter talked about the struggling with sin and he described it as a war going on in our mind and in our body. And in chapter 7 verse 24 he says, What a wretched man I am! Who will rescue me? And he goes on to say, Praise God, only Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. How many of us can agree with him there? What a wretched person we are! But praise God for Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The next benefit we have is assistance available 24-7. Look here what Romans 8, 26-27 tells us. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. 
We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And He who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. Amen. When I need help, I can go to God at any time, at any place, for anything. Amen. Psalm 46, 1 reminds us that God is our strength and our protector, and He is our very present help in time of trouble or need. Whenever we need Him, He's there. He's ever present, is what one of the versions say. Always there. Amen. There may be times when I'm so overwhelmed, I don't even know what I need. But that's where we have His Spirit who knows exactly what it is we need, and He intercedes for us before God. He knows exactly what it is we need, and praise God because of all His wisdom and mercy, we are covered. He sends us His Holy Spirit to guide us, to lead us, to show us the way. Amen. Now, what's exactly covered? Let's look here in Romans chapter 4, verses 7 through 8. Blessed are those whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Amen. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord will never count against him. Isn't that amazing? Every sin, all is covered, no matter what it is. It tells us here, every transgression, every sin is covered. Praise God. Is there a limit? Well, let's look at what Psalm 103 tells us, verses 11 through 13. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. What a love, right? Look what the Apostle John tells us. This is how God showed His love among us. He sent us His one and only Son into the world that we might live through Him. And this is love. Not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent us His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. That atoning blood of Christ covers us. The death of Jesus on the cross, the blood that he shed was the coverage we needed for the forgiveness of all our sins. Amen. And because he rose from the dead, he gives us that assurance that we will have eternal life with him. Amen. Praise God. So how long is this covenant good for? Let's look at what Psalm 111 verse 9 tells us. He provided redemption for his people. He ordained his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. Can you say that with me? Holy and awesome is your name, Lord. Thank you. Amen. So what's the, the deductible here? What's required of me up front? Very simple. Let's look at what Romans 10 says. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you pro profess your faith and are saved. Do you believe it? You're covered. Amen. Praise God. Now, let's look at the premium. Always got to cost us something, right? The mediator of this covenant, Jesus Christ, has already paid the debt. Amen. He's already covered the cost. At the cross, he paid for our debt in full. All we had to do was receive this gift of salvation and follow him. Psalm 103 sums up all the benefits we have in our soul insurance. Read with me. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins, and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Isn't that amazing? He forgives me, he heals me, he redeems me, he crowns me, he satisfies me. 
The Apostle Paul in Ephesians reminds us that we have been blessed in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Amen. Look what verses 7 through 8 say. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. What a benefit we have in his grace, amen? He's poured it over and over and over, exceedingly abundantly over us. He's lavished us, amen, with his wonderful love. And there's more. Just so that we'll know that our inheritance is guaranteed, that this coverage is good, look here at what Ephesians chapter 1 verses 13 and 14 tell us. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. Amen. Are you in good hands? Absolutely. The moment you gave your heart to Jesus, you were covered. Amen. You received this soul insurance. Praise God. Look at what Hebrews chapter 6 says. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where our forerunner Jesus has entered on our behalf. Amen. In the event our life came to an end on this earth, isn't it wonderful to know that we have the greatest life insurance policy promised by God, guaranteed by the blood of Jesus Christ, and assured by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? And think about this. All our loved ones who have already gone before us, they've already cashed in on their policy. They're already living in perfect peace in the presence of God. Amen. Amen. We are definitely in good hands. John 3, 35 tells us, The Father loves the Son and has placed everything in His hands. And just for added assurance, God reminds us that we share in this blessing in Isaiah 49, 16. See, I have engraved you in the palm of my hands. That is the evidence of love that Jesus has for us. Because every time he sees those scars in his hands, he is reminded of the great love he has for you and me and how he cares for us, amen? He's engraved us in the palm of his hands. Isn't that beautiful? God knows you, he sees you, he loves you, and he cares for you. Are you in good hands? Yes, we are. We are all in his good hands. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, yeah. And one last thing. When's the time to sign up for this soul insurance? Now. And all you have to do is call. The word tells us everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen. Praise God. God bless you. Have a wonderful week and enjoy all the blessings you have in Christ. Amen. See you next week.